Hello everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Today we're taking a look at this, the Battle of Versailles, which sounds like a war game. Um, and this is, while it is a historical game and it's card driven, very mm -hmm. head to head, uh, it's not a war game, it's about actually a, a historical fashion show. That's right. I found that to be a very interesting theme. This is from Salt and Pepper Games, a company that's impressed both you and I with a lot of their fare lately. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna go ahead Z is going to show you how this one plays. Yeah. And then we'll give you our thoughts. Let's go to war. In this game, each side, the French side and the American side, has three ways in which they can win. Uh, if we take a look at the French side over here, they can win either by getting the prestige token all the way over here to the end of the track on their side right there, or they can get seven celebrities, or they can get 15 of these flag symbols on these prestige tokens. The other side, the American side, they could get seven celebrities as well. They could get to this side uh, of the uh, prestige track there. So again, those two are shared, seven celebrities or making it all the way up here. And then the other way is by having dresses on one of their locations that show all six different symbols. This one shows two different symbols there, it has three victory points below that. If they can show all six different ones, they will win the game. And so, in the game, the players are going to be moving this uh, runway model down the runway here, taking actions everywhere that it stops until we are done, then it wraps around to the beginning and we start again. This keeps going until one of those winning conditions is achieved. So we start right over here with the players drawing cards. This is facing me, that means I draw five cards, and then my opponent, the Americans there, would draw five and discard one. That's what that means there. So they'll do that, and as soon as we're both done with it, the runway model then moves to the next one. So they'll do that, they'll take a look at these, and they'll discard one of them, and we are going to continue. So these in the middle, these five right here, are all, are all about playing cards. Uh, in some instances, both players will play a card, and in some instances, only the French side will play a card. Basically, it boils down to the French side is going to play five times, and the American side only plays three. These are set up like this for your very first game, but it's possible that you can, you can mix these up in future games if you so choose. So starting right here, each of us is going to play a card. There are some little black arrows right there that denote who has priority and both players are going to pick a card and then whoever has priority decides who plays first. All right, so we are going to say we're doing this and I have priority, I say go ahead and go first. They flip over their card. If it's a dress, it goes right there. If it's a celebrity and we're going to get to them, they're going to go over here. They go to the space closest to you that's still empty, possibly triggering an ability right there and whatever the celebrity might do. And if it's an event, then you do whatever it says and you discard that card. So my opponent there has flipped theirs and I go ahead and flip mine and I put it right there. There's also something else you can do with these cards instead of actually playing them. I can just chuck the card and draw two cards from my deck or I could put it face down over here on this income tile and leave it there for later. Once we get to that spot, I'll explain what that does. Let's say I did that. I never showed my opponent the card, I just put it there face down. We move on to this one, only I get to play a card, and so perhaps I play this card. And we move to there, and we both play a card, and again, my, my opponent now, the American side has priority, perhaps they'll do that. They could do something like this that lets them move one dress of either team. Or they could do this, which says discard up to two opponents' dresses from the runway and then move one dress of either team. Very confrontational things, generally speaking, okay? So we'll both play a card and we'll go through these until we get to this one. In this one, whoever has uh, the priority, which are these black arrows, they can play one more card from their hand. I say my opponents also play. And then we're going to reveal these and just check the income, the amount of money at the bottom of these cards. Uh, whoever has the most is going to get two of these tiles out here. You have to take the face up ones. They have an ability, and I'm going to take that, and then anything orthogonally adjacent to that is flipped face up. And then my opponent, if they have at least as much money 
uh, at least as, as much as half of what I have. So I have uh, 11 right here. They have four. That's not at least half. But if I had five or more, then they could take one. All right. In this case, if it actually worked out like this, they would not. I'm also getting a bonus one from there, actually. So I really am at uh, 12, five, six, and one. Once that's done, these cards are removed from the game, and that's important. These are not ever going to go back into your deck, so you need to be careful what you put there for income, because it's fully gone from the game. Once that's done, we go to here, and we are going to score some special bonuses from our current active designers. We're going to check symbols, and we're going to see if we get these special bonuses. Once they're done, these can go away. Each player only gets one for each, okay? Actually, they don't go away quite yet because we're going to need them for this step, but after that they'll go away. So we check what bonuses we get. We have on this side over here, they're checking for different uh, uh, patterns and different uh, um, categories of dresses, and you'll get bonuses for that. And then the last one here then would be victory points, and we check victory points. Uh, that goes on your current um, designer as well as any tiles that have victory points, as well as any dresses where you can see victory points. One important feature of the dresses for the French side and the American side is if I cover up this dress, and she has to be there for me to do that, then on the French side, you'll see there's a split there. I cover up to the line, and the victory points are going to stick around. On the American side, it's the other way around. Uh, the victory points are on the bottom, and they will be covered, and you'll start seeing more features. The features will carry from round to round on the American side. So once we've finished over here, and we've gotten some victory points, and those points, those stars, are tracked on here. So let's say I have four, five, uh, six, seven, let's say, and my opponent has two. Well then, the difference is five, and I'm going to pull this five towards the French side. And again, that's a condition for victory right there, if you can get it all the way up here. And then we go back to the beginning. This is discarded, and we start again. Now, a couple of symbols that are important in the game. You can play cards sometimes out of, uh, 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 you know, out of just being triggered by one of these tiles, and these, these over here will let you do that. You might be drawing more cards. This lets you draw more cards. You might be activating various things or adding uh, various tokens. But the main thing is that these lights over here represent how upgraded that tile is. And a lot of these over here are going to let you do that. They're going to let you upgrade these locations. If you have a lit light and they're fully lit, this, then this is as good as it gets. This one right here is as good as it gets. But this one... I have two lights on my side, my opponent has one. If I upgrade this tile, I'm going to go to three lights. And I would flip it over like that. And if my opponent, instead, was the one who was upgrading this, then they flip it. So that they have two, and I have one. It's always a seesaw. There will always be three lit uh, lights on these. And if my opponent pulls them away, then they'll do that first. If they do it again, they do that, and so on. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, that sort of seesaw push and pull idea. So there you go, you can do that and try to pull away some bonuses and special benefits that you would get. Uh, all of these usually manipulate that and then also the French side cares about these uh, flag symbols, like I said. The celebrities, you are going to play them uh, over here and they are going to give you special abilities, special bonuses, and also if there's something printed here. If both sides have played a bunch of these, um, and they are filled, so if my opponent has cards all the way up to here, and I have these two, and I would play another one, then I discard theirs, and I play mine right there, but I don't get this bonus. If they were occupying that, I get them out of there, and I play, I just don't get that, all right? That's pretty much it. So that's the game. You try to achieve one of those three conditions. If you do, you are the winner of the game. And that's a general overview of how the game works. I think the theming on this one is, well, just to, to really put it out, it's one of my favorite parts of this game, actually. Yes. 
Um, and I, I assume that you feel that way too. Like the production yes. on it, the art, all that stuff is really good. But the just what a cool different setting for this game to be in. And well researched setting as well. That's the thing about it is that it not only is it a very specific moment in time and a very specific historical event. Um, not in the way we talk about, like, World War II. Everybody's aware of it. The Battle of Versailles, I never heard of it. No. Nope. And you, probably many, many people who are not into fashion have heard of it. But you get that first blush, and you're like, yeah, they had a fashion show they put on to try to raise some money to rebuild this place. Okay? And then you keep going, though, and they did this. They did their research. And new layers, new events, uh, politics at play... Uh, power dynamics at play, you know, social, socioeconomic uh, layers. I mean, it, there's so much here that they were able to discover, to bring to the surface, and represent on these cards that that's partly, I mean, it, why it feels like a war game, because it's so well developed, so well researched. It also right. feels like a war game because, well, it kind of feels like a card-driven war game where right. I just, like, smack you. Every time I play one of these cards, I'm like, nah, get that person out of there, burn that dress to the ground, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, the research that went into it is honestly impressive and just kind of made me interested in finding out more about this stuff. I, I agree, and to the point where it is entrenched not just on the card. A lot of games have uh, a card that represents something cool thematically. Right. And, th and I always appreciate that. But down to the turn structure, the three turns for the France player versus the the five for the France versus the three turns for the American player. Right, right. Is really baked in that idea of the, the different lengths of the fashion shows. And right. And the way that the Americans are trying to collect different patterns which represent um, uh, African-American influence and different, uh, you know, different patterns that were just kind of new and bold. Yeah. And if they're able to impress with one single dress that has so much stuff... That shakes the market so drastically that they're considered the winner of the battle. Right. I love that the theme is not just, yeah, on the cards, but in the structure of the game itself. Yeah, it's it's captivating. Uh, and again, it give you a little bit of flavor in here in the book uh, as to who these people are and what the cards kind of represent. And just reading this stuff is so rich and helps the game so much. If you don't have this available to you... I think you could still easily enjoy the game. But just reading over what these things mean, who are, who is this based on? What happened there with, you know, whoever, uh, Oscar de la Renta did what, to where, to whom? Boom, I got it, and it enriches the experience. Why was Liza Minnelli's performance so interesting and impressive that it's a, she's her own celebrity card in the game? Right. Um, now, in terms of the gameplay, the other great thing is that this game is actually fun to play. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes we're complimenting a game on, on a great theme and something unique, and then the shoe drops. You know, it's it, oh, too oh, bad. It feels educational right. in the bad sense of that. Yeah. yeah. No, not this one. Like, mm -hmm. for me, this is just a very smooth card game, you know, card-driven game where cards do one of three things for the most part, right? Right. But then there's a little bit of multi-use as well. You can put that card over the in the investment area, and that's going to have another implication when you get down to the round structure. Mm -hmm. The game is laid out very well. The runway being also the timer, uh, not, not timer, but the kind of the um, the turn structure, I guess, the, yeah, of, the, of the round. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very interesting. And again, the different ways in which you can win. This idea that various things matter differently to the two players, right? Like those tiles that you can get from the palace. Yeah, they have a power. If I'm the American player, I want that because I want that power. But if you're the French player, you also get the flags. And you get 15 of those. doesn't matter how nice my dresses are going or how close I am. You win, you know? I like that. I like that the, the three ways to win on each side, two of them shared, one of them different, one of them unique to that side... It's very clever. It seems and feels very well balanced. On top of that, you've got the system for upgrading the tiles. And so it's like, what is it, eight or so tug-of-war fights. Really? That are yeah. all kind of happening simultaneously, you know? And if I'm, you're putting pressure over here on me through something, I can be like, great. But also, I'm going to now, when I do the income phase, bam, I'm going to flip this over. And I'm now, income matters more to me. It's easier for me to get to a higher point. So I'm going to be focusing on the, the palace. 
it's interesting because it manages to both feel very intricate, and I understand that what I'm saying sort of sounds intricate and difficult. It also is easy to play. It, it really is. It just flows. Like, it's this not a hard game to wrap your head around, to, to get going, you know? I think the biggest negative for me lies in those tiles as you rotate them and then flip them over. There is definitely going to be a, a good chunk of the game where it feels like, oh, I worked hard, I did this clever thing, I rotate this tile so I have the advantage. And the other person goes, well, I, I got this tile from the palace and I, I'm going to flip it back. Yes. Like, ah, oh, well, they're going on. You know, there's going to be quite a bit of kind of like, I got this, oh, you undid it somewhere else. Oh, you un And then you undid this, but I got it back. Mm -hmm. At some point, though, I think the thing that supersedes that is that the pressure points of those three different win conditions come into play. Yeah. Where, at this point, I could start undoing your bonuses, but I really need to collect those 15 flags. Yeah. I'm going to take a worse tile that has no ability, but has three flags yeah. as a French player. And so then you start pushing towards those and kind of letting the other player have advantages here and there, because you're like, oof, I'm going to let that go and focus on this so that I can clench it before you do. And put pressure on you. Maybe it'll make you flinch. Maybe you'll go, oh, I need to stop collecting patterns and start pulling back on the influence because you're getting close to 15 on your side or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It, to me, it kind of feels like Seven Wonders Duel uh, as a two-player game. A two-player game in which, again, it has this tug-of-war feeling with various pressure points. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm not getting too many victory points, but I might pull off a... Uh, military victory. If you don't drop what you're doing and start worrying about that, I'm going to steamroll you. And this one has that feeling with a few different, you know, uh, things happening simultaneously, spinning discs, and you can't take your eye off any one of them. And I would say that just to, I like that you brought up this comparison. I was thinking about Seven Wonders Duel as well. In that game, it tends to end with counting victory points, right? Yes. Science and military victories are less common, but I like that they're there because they still make you have to pay attention to that. I think in Battle of Versailles, I think that you'll see an instant win condition more frequently. Yes. And sometimes it'll come down to the points, and those points still matter, even if you don't hit the 15 cause the instant win. Mm -hmm. But if, if I'm like, I don't know if I can make the dress in time, I'm stopping you from getting the 15 flags, yeah. but you're sitting at six points. I really need to shift that back to my side. Right, right. Uh, and and the, the cards between the two players stack differently, so one side might get a yeah. bunch of points early, and then that can change to the other side as they start stacking up more cards differently. Yeah, I think I showed it in the overview, so you know what we're talking about here, but it's a subtle difference with one side keeping the patterns, the other side keeping the victory points as you're stacking cards on top of one another dresses. It's just, again, it's one of those ways in which they tweak something very small and the repercussions of that, the asymmetry of that, it reverberates through the game, through the entire game. It's a very well done uh, little thing. And this game feels like that to me. A very well done, lots of little things add up to a greater than the sum of its parts, I would say. A couple of minor issues for me as far as production goes, I don't really like the uh, runway model being the little cardboard cutout. It's a little flimsy. Yeah. I wish that there was a just something a little nicer in there. You know, it's one of those things that I'm thinking I might want to try to replace in mine. Get a nicer something. It's one pawn. Even just like a, a plastic stand on the bottom will make it a little bit more stable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be nice. And then the other one was the palace has one sort of graphical quirk. In which every time you take a tile, you reveal its neighbors become face up. And because of the way the palace is laid out, you have the yellow and then the blue. And then a gap in space. And then the pink. And those just visually don't look right. It looks mm. like, you know, you kind of have to assume. They don't really explain this. You have to assume that, yes, that blue and that out pink, you know, outwards facing pink or whatever, they're, they're adjacent. Once you take that blue, that pink flips. They're not right next to each other. It's just a weird quirk, visual quirk. Um, I think I know why they did it, just because it looks better on the palace, but yeah. I don't know if I'm glad they did it. It seems visually awkward while playing. And the, the one other thing, like small production note that I would add to that is uh, there are the, like the fashion designer cards 
have the same back as like your playing cards, and they never will mix. That's right. And just little little things like that that I think, oh, okay, they could have done a little bit nicer. Yes, but, I agree. But I understand that Salt and Pepper is a pretty small, sure, pretty small company here. Um, coming down to final scores here, with all that in mind, I'm giving this an eight. This is such a great game. Mm-hmm. It's so fun to play. It is a. It is. It toes the line between like interactive and almost mean, right? Like I, I think it's out and out mean. I think it's, think it's so? very confrontational. Yeah, it is very confrontational, but in a way that I, I will always understand. If I have five patterns stacked up as the U.S. player, I am, I'm trying to make sure that I can get that sixth one played before you mess with. It. Oh, you messed with it. Okay. You know, I expect it. Sure. And it's to your advantage. So it's never mean just kind of for the sake of being mean, but it is confrontational is probably a great word to use for right. it. Very confrontational, but very fun, very smooth. You figure out the iconography very quickly, and then you're just kind of having fun. I like this yeah. a lot. Yeah. I'm coming in slightly higher than you actually at an 8.5, and I agree with everything you're saying here. I think it is very... I don't know if mean's the right word. Mean sounds, you know, uh, childlike. And this game I actually find to be a very mature design. I don't mean mature content. I mean in its pursuit of what it's attempting to do. This is an adult game. It feels like it is a refined uh, package. It knows what it's doing. It is well-researched. It has grown up about it. It is doing it well. And that involves conflict. You know, so again, mean sounds childlike, mean. Um, I like everything it's doing, and it's, while it has a couple of missteps, as we were saying about the production, as far as the production goes, I have a lot of respect for it, and that's great, and that works for some games, and then I don't really like the game, and I'm like, I respect this game, that's wonderful. This one I both respect and really enjoy throwing down on the table and having a go. Um... So an 8.5 for me, this is one I would recommend unless, again, you have an adverse reaction to that conflict, that direct head-to-head competition. This is one I think you should uh, you should give a go to. It's uh, incredibly well finalized. Yeah, this is this is wonderful. For, so an 8.5, mm-hmm. a high score, meaning that Battle of Versailles is getting a seal of excellence from here at the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for coming by this review. Until next time, my name is Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun. Fashioning. Fashioning. Fashioning.